Hey everybody, this is Dimple here again, welcoming you all back to my tutorials on Android Framework Components Part 4. In this tutorial, we will learn about Android Power Manager Framework. What is this Android Power Manager? So, Android Power Manager is built as a wrapper to Linux Power Management. Power Manager class will provide all the required power management features in your applications and services which mediates between the user space and the kernel interface. So this power management framework is written in Java. It acts like a driver which will connect or communicate with Android power driver through the JNI. Now this Android power manager will make use of the concepts called wake locks. We will see what are wake locks in our upcoming slides. So using wake locks and timeout mechanisms to switch the state of the system power. So the responsibility or the aim of the power manager is to always keep your power consumption of the system reduced, decreased so that your device is more durable. Now some of the features which are supported by Android power manager are the screen, keyboard, buttons, backlights and brightness of the screen. So user applications will use power manager class to control the power state of the device so we have to create or we have to obtain this power service of power manager before proceeding so we'll see what are wake locks now so wake locks are applications running in dalvik which can prevent the system from entering a sleep or suspend mode so basically wake locks are responsible in always keeping your system your system or device awake so that the device will not enter the sleep mode so these are the types of wake locks the first one is partial wake lock partial wake lock will ensure that your cpu is always running in this case the screen might not be on or may be on the second type of wake lock is screen dim wake lock here the screen is on but it is dim Keyboard backlight will be allowed to go off. The third type of wake lock is screen bright wake lock where the screen is on but it is bright and keyboard may be off. The last type of wake lock is full wake lock where the device is always on, full device is on including your CPU, your keyboard, backlights, screen, everything is on. So one important point we have to remember is under all the four cases CPU will always be on. And um, suppose there is a user application which has acquired full wake lock. That time if any touch event occurs, the entire device will go to the awake state. So let's imagine one more scenario where your screen, screen lock timeout happens. When your screen lock timeout happens, the device will enter the notification state. Okay, so if partial wake locks are acquired, it will still remain in the notification state where you can still be getting all your messages, events, calls or you can listen to music. If partial wake locks are they themselves released, machine will go to sleep. That is, it is equivalent to your system or device switched off. So the next type of wake lock is kernel wake lock. Kernel wake lock is used to prevent the system from entering suspend or low power state and kernel wake locks can be acquired in two methods. First is uh, through native applications that is through power.c interface. Power.c is nothing but it is a C library for power management. The second method where the kernel wake locks can be acquired or released is internally from the kernel. So this partial wake locks have a special behavior or uh, the other three types of wake locks are maintained or created in the Java or framework layer. But this partial wake lock is maintained in kernel layer not in Java layer. So when partial wake lock in Java layer is created internally a partial wake lock in kernel layer is also created. So all the partial wake locks in Java layer is protected by one wake lock in kernel layer. So as long as your partial wake locks are acquired, as long as your partial wake locks are running, the CPU will be on 
which in turn prevents the system entering the sleep mode so once your partial wake lock is released the device will go to sleep mode so here this diagram depicts a simple flow of how wake lock works so here are application uh, applications in the application layer which request a new wake lock and um, these new wake locks are created from the power manager in the application framework layer so once created they move to linux kernel where all the wake locks are controlled so here you can see full wake lock is enabled cpu will be on lcd will be on and keyboard will be on and full wake locks so whereas partial wake locks only cpu will be on then what is the flow of how these wake locks are created so first you have to create a uh, system service power by calling this function called power service next you have to create a new wake lock and you have to specify the type of wake lock along with the timeouts mentioning the timeouts the third thing is that you have to acquire a wake lock by calling the acquire function the next step is perform operation so whatever uh, operation the wake lock is responsible for that operation is performed if a wake lock is responsible for playing music in the background when the screen is off then the music will be played that is just an example which i gave you then finally when everything is done the wake lock will be released so here is how you do this here is a simple code snippet see power manager pm is the object power manager object which is created using this get system service context dot power manager and then using the power manager we create a wake lock using new wake lock function so this new wake lock function has two parameters the first parameter will tell what is the type of wake lock and the second parameter will tell the title for that particular wake lock so once a wake lock is created using new wake lock function we call the acquire function so in acquire what happens is request is sent to the power manager so power manager service will take a wake lock and add this wake lock to the registered list of wake locks so power manager will set the power state to on if partial wake lock is created for the first time then it is taken also in the kernel layer if it is created for the second time it will just be added to the list so next function to be called is release so in release what happens is again request is sent to the power manager to remove the wake lock from the registered list and if partial wake lock is the last to be released then power manager service will also release the wake lock in the kernel and bring the kernel to the suspend mode so here is the finite state machine of the android power management imagine your system is in sleep mode initially when you create a wake lock or a wake up source a device enters awake state now if a timeout occurs again it will enter the notification state so in notification state if partial wake locks are enabled you start getting notification if partial wake lock is disabled or if partial wake lock is released again the system enters the sleep mode so when you are in notification state a touch or a keyboard you user event activity happens then again the device enters back to the awake state so when power button is pressed go to sleep function is called so when go to sleep function is called this function is the one which will release all the wake locks it will release the wake locks power state is set to off and in java native interface the screen is set to off so power state is sent to memory so this was all about power manager framework please stay tuned in with my next videos in coming parts to learn more about different components of android framework thank you